After over a decade of Banjo-Kazooie feeling like a forbidden term at E3, Nintendo finally brings the characters back for the first time since 2008 by adding them to the Smash Ultimate roster, despite Microsoft seemingly having no interest in the franchise. But now that Banjo's proven to be popular enough to break the internet, I'm guaranteeing that a third game's gonna happen. However, with Microsoft owning the IP, there's still a lot of unanswered questions, such as whether or not the game's gonna be an Xbox exclusive. Is the game already in development? And if it is in development, will it end up being any good now that Rare's a shell of its former self? Well, turn your volume up to full blast, open up a can of horse sauce, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, the former youngest human being alive camera, to tell you why Banjo 3 is definitely happening, and how its complicated release might pan out. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm pretty goddamn excited that Banjo and Kazooie are coming to Smash, even though I was skeptical that it ever happen. Cause I'd rather be wrong and get Banjo rather than be right and say I told you so. I mean, I wanted Banjo and Kazooie in the game more than literally any other character ever, even if I had no limits as to who I could choose from. And the reason for that's despite Microsoft owning the IP, these characters are always gonna be Nintendo as far as I'm concerned. So seeing them essentially come home is just plain neat. The main reason why I didn't think this was possible, though, is because even though Microsoft's been trying to be friendly with Nintendo and Sony in recent years, Nintendo's never exactly been known to play well with others, even though they are a little more open to the idea than Sony. So I just found it hard to believe that Nintendo would roll the red carpet out for a beloved character owned by a rival, just so that rival could announce a new game that Endog wouldn't have on their platforms. And I know Joker was one of the DLC characters for Smash, despite Persona 5 not being on the Switch. But I'm standing firm that Persona games will come to Nintendo someday, even if it's not as soon as I thought they would. And even if they don't, Nintendo's still got Persona 5 Scramble and Persona Q2, which both have Joker in them. So it's not like they didn't get anything out of the deal for putting Joker in Smash. And given that Nintendo's got a pretty good thing going with the Dragon Quest franchise right now, I do expect them to get a little something extra out of the Banjo deal other than DLC sales. And I highly doubt it'd be a spin-off or anything like that either. Because if we get Banjo in anything new, at this point, then it's gotta be a core game. Otherwise, fans are just gonna raise hell all over the place. And like I said, after the internet response to the DLC reveal, Microsoft would be insane to not make a third game happen. It's hard to imagine Banjo 3 not being a Microsoft exclusive, but if there was ever a time in the history of gaming that a company would release one of their IPs on a rival console, then it would definitely be now with Microsoft allowing Banjo 3 on the Switch, or whatever Nintendo's got going on by the time the game actually gets made. I always talk about how stupid Microsoft is for not having more exclusives, but along with a few other games they own, I think this might just make them more money to share it with Nintendo, and it would definitely make this whole Banjo deal make a lot more sense as well. Banjo being exclusive to Microsoft would lead to some Xbox sales, but I honestly think that it'd make way more money to just let it appear on Nintendo as well. It is possible that Banjo was added to Smash just because fans had begged for it for over a decade, but there's a lot of money being left on the table if that's all it ends up being. And I think the above average sized den knows it and wants a piece of the pie as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if they worked out some kind of deal with Microsoft beforehand that either made sure Microsoft wasn't going to capitalize on the Smash hype and swoop in with Banjo 3, or that they'd have to share the game if Banjo 3 ever happened. And I don't think Microsoft would necessarily be against this, because if Banjo 3 were a permanent exclusive to Xbox, then some fans might view it as the franchise being held hostage. And some might even refused to buy it out of protest, even though Nintendo was dumb enough to let Rare go in the first place. Even if sharing Banjo 3 led to fewer sales on the Xbox version, which it probably would, Microsoft would still sell more consoles in the long run by doing something that earns the brand more respect. I could say this because I used to personally hate Microsoft. I just always thought they were kind of dicks, but the changes Phil Spencer's made since taking over has really made it hard for me to stay mad at him. And I think Microsoft's strategy at this point is to gain the consumer's trust, which has certainly worked with me. Making the Xbox One backwards compatible with Xbox 360 games probably cost them a lot more money than it made them. But it did earn them a ton of respect, which is something that can't be bought. And I think sharing Banjo 3 would earn them respect as well. So I honestly don't think it's out of the question to see it come to the Switch. After all, they own Minecraft, and that game's on pretty much everything. You could argue that since Minecraft was already on everything before Microsoft acquired it, that it just makes more sense to leave it be given that it makes the company more money in the long run than it would to hoard it on the Xbox and PC. But just because Banjo 3 is not already a multiplat, I still think they'd make way more money by sharing it. And if you still don't believe me, then just take a look at Cuphead. The game was developed by Studio MDHR, which does own the IP, but Microsoft owns the publishing rights to the game seeing as how they funded it. And since nobody was buying an Xbox just to play Cuphead two years after the game came out, it just made more sense for Microsoft to let the Switch have it 
it as well. Because not only did they make ass loads more money from people who probably already bought the Xbox version, but it also earned them respect for people like myself who really wanted to play the game, but weren't willing to buy an Xbox One for it. So no matter how I look at it, I don't see the exact same thing not happening with Banjo 3, even if Nintendo doesn't get first dibs after the Smash hype. Because in the end, they're still making money off the DLC, and it's not like they have to make Banjo 3 anyway. So any sales that game eventually makes on their platform is just easy money, even if it does take a couple more years. Not to mention that it's been proven that people will buy the same game twice on the Switch thanks to the portability, and really just for the love of the brand, which is the exact same kind of love Microsoft's going for right now. So since everyone involved has something to gain, I think it's easy to understand why a third game would be made, and why Nintendo would promote it with the Smash hype as well. But all this brings us to the actual game. And if I'm being honest, I am a little bit concerned about how the quality would turn out. Because as amazing as Rare was in the 90s and early 2000s, they're certainly not the same company they used to be given that the original developers all left and have since started their own company called Platonic. And even if Microsoft commissioned the original team to make Banjo 3, which I do think would be their best bet, there is still a concern that the game might not live up to its potential given that Ukulele was met with a resounding meh. Personally, I thought the game was pretty good, and even a little underrated, but it's certainly not as good as Banjo-Kazooie. And I suppose Microsoft could have one of their 87 new game studios make it instead of Rare, but the last time a Rare IP was loaned to an outside developer, we got Episode 1 of Conker's Big Reunion. And if you played that game, then you'd understand why we never got an Episode 2. So as certain as I am that Banjo-3 will in fact happen one day, and that it'll probably end up on the Switch at some point, I am cautious about the game's quality, but because of the potential it holds for the future, I am optimistic that it'll be home run. And even if the game ends up sucking, it'd still be better than wondering what could have been. But I'll tell you two people who'd never make a bad banjo game are today's patrons of the day, Justin D and Mr. Cool Kid. If you want to be badasses like them, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon for loot boxes and silly rewards. Or if you'd rather show support by picking a shirt or mug up, then send pictures of videos of you rocking it to make a cameo like these badasses right here. What do you think about the possibility of Banjo 3, though? Do you think the Smash invite's nothing more than giving fans a character that they want? Either way, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to see more videos like this. And if you want to help this channel grow, then simply liking and sharing goes a long way. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.